Let's see how we can solve boundary value problems in cylindrical symmetry. The Laplacian now is, we'll, we'll be solving the Laplace's equation in this case also. The Laplacian in cylindrical coordinates is written as follows. Once again, you can either look it up or you can find the scale factors and write down the Laplacian. Now the uh, type of uh, solution that we're looking for is again the product and by the uniqueness of uh, Laplace's equation, if that turns out to be one solution, then it's, it is the only solution. So that's a great advantage of this method. So writing it as three separate products, I get Q of uh, phi and Z of Z. If I substitute it and divide both sides by the product of R, Q, and Z, I end up getting the following equation. Here primes denote the derivative with respect to the arguments, so that's with respect to R, for example. And then if I write uh, Q double prime, it's probably it's with respect to phi. And Z double prime is derivatives with respect to the z coordinate. Now immediately you see that uh, in this situation um, you cannot, you can uh, say that this is probably a function only of z and separate that, but it's not a very useful thing to do that. It's more useful. You can do it like that, but it's better to multiply the whole thing throughout by rho squared, assuming that rho is not zero. Uh, well actually, even if rho is zero, it doesn't matter because you're just multiplying it. So you're going to get rho squared r double prime over r plus rho times, because one factor of rho squared cancels with rho here. So r prime over r, but now you're corrupted z, so you can't separate that anymore. But the great advantage is most problems do have azimuthal symmetry. They may not have Z symmetry. For example, if you're boiling a beaker of water on a hot plate, there's no Z symmetry, but there's certainly symmetry because uh, uh, hot plates are fairly uh, azimuthal symmetric. So you can say that this depends on R and Z, but that depends only on phi. So just like we did in the previous problem, where we, a previous video, where we studied the Laplacian uh, in spherical symmetry, the azimuthal part separates out, and I will refer you to MM79 for this. We can write Q as equal to e to the i nu phi. You'll understand why I'm using nu very soon. So I'm using nu actually, I'll be just tell you right now, because you'll end up getting the Bessel function of order nu very shortly from the radial equation. So once you have this equal to negative nu squared, so this comes from setting q double prime over q equal to negative nu squared, that's what gives you the periodic or sine and cosine solutions that are captured in the Euler's representation. The rest of it will be equal to positive nu squared or if you bring everything to the left side, it's going to be negative nu squared. So the rest of the equation looks like this. Rho squared r double prime over r, zero equals that, plus rho r prime over r, plus rho squared z double prime over z. And since q double prime over q is negative nu squared, I'll write that here. Now what I'll do is, at this point I can't make any statement, but if I divide both sides back by r squared, which basically I'm undoing what I did there, then I get zero equals r double prime over r. So it's a divide and conquer approach. One by one, you're um, getting rid of things. And this time, you notice that this is only a function of rho, and z double prime over z is a function just of z. You could have done the divide and conquer approach earlier but I prefer to do it like this for z first, but I, I do it for uh, rho first. So this depends on only rho. 
So, so now we have a very nice uh, separation. Let's deal with z double prime first. If you have z double prime over z equal to a constant we'll call k squared, then z will be a linear combination of either cinch or cosh, or you can think of it as e to the plus or minus kz. If k is real, and or it's going to be a linear combination of sine and cosine, or e to the plus or minus ikz, if k is um, imaginary. Which is it? We don't know yet. Depending on the problem, we'll know. In most cases, like think about a beaker being heated up from below, you are not going to get periodic solutions. The beaker is not going to get cold and then hot, cold and hot. That never happens. So you're going to choose a solution that decays nicely at infinity because you don't expect heat to travel that far up. Now, once you have that, the, the fate of the rest of the problem is sealed. So let's write the rest of the problem. This tells me that uh, the radial part alone, this part, r double prime over r plus 1 over rho r prime minus nu squared over rho squared plus k squared, because z double prime over z is equal to k squared, must be 0. Rewriting it, I get r double prime plus 1 over rho r prime plus k squared minus nu squared over rho squared r. Doesn't quite look like Bessel's equation, but we're getting close. It turns out that you have to make the substitution x equal to k times rho. If you do that, a few steps later, you can read this up on my notes or you can do this on your own, you get x double prime, uh, x squared r double prime plus x r prime plus x squared minus nu squared r equal to zero. And that's the standard form of the Bessel functions. I have to warn you that primes now mean their derivative with respect to x and not with respect to rho. So the factor of k is implicit when you do the differentiation. So the solutions are going to be as follows. If nu belongs to the integers, as it often turns out to be the case, if you apply quantization conditions, then nu does belong to the integers, then you have to use the um, j nu k rho. It's always safe to use the linear combination of j nu and the n nu or y nu function. And these are called Neumann functions or Weber functions. And I would always use this just to be on the safe side. And this is if k is real. So if you have the realistic things like decays at infinity or blow-ups at infinity, then, then you're going to use these. And if, again, if nu is an integer, you're going to use i nu, which are the modified Bessel functions, and k nu if k is imaginary. So if by some coincidence you have periodic boundary conditions, which you can have, for example, you have a um, hot plate down here and a hot plate above too. So that's a um, occurrence of a hot plate over a finite length, two places. So I just want to uh, maybe remind you what these modified Bessel functions are. The modified Bessel functions I knew of x are defined as i to the minus nu j nu of i x and the k nu of x is defined as a sum of both j nu and i nu. Now <coughs> 
let's just try uh, doing a uh, simple uh, problem in principle. So I want to write the most general solution to a problem involving the um, a semi-infinite cylinder. So I have a semi-infinite cylinder that's going off just this example I was talking about. And we'll take our boundary conditions as follows. I have specified what the <clears throat> situation is at rho equal to a and I've specified what it is at z equal to 0. These are the boundary conditions. The boundary conditions for capital Phi are that capital Phi is equal to f of uh, some arbitrary function of theta and z alone at the surface of the beaker so it can be pretty general. It can vary both with theta and with height. And, oh, I should have said phi, not theta. And at z equal to zero, which is a hot plate, you can have the hot plate itself be a pretty complicated object like an induction coil, which is a function of both r and phi. Usually even induction coils are function just of r, not of phi, but this can be still very general. If you do this, then And let's suppose you have azimuthal symmetry. So this, uh, it is, you know, it's got this symmetry as you go around, so it really doesn't depend on phi. Then the solutions are going to be linear combinations. So phi of uh, rho, phi, and z, it's going to be the sum from m equals minus infinity to plus infinity e to the i m phi, that's the asymmetrical part. And then you have a m, j m k rho plus b m y m k rho e to the minus k z because I know that if it's semi-infinite, the only solution I can choose is this. So I have the k real, and with real, I go with j and n, or y. So one comment, this solution is valid for both inside the cylinder and outside the cylinder. Within the cylinder, we can use both j and y. There's no problem with that. But outside the cylinder, only keep j. The reason for that is y has blow-up properties. So as rho goes to infinity, this blows up. You don't want that. You want the temperature to die off at infinity. So j has appropriate properties. So you just keep the j for rho bigger than a. Once you have that, the coefficients come from the Fourier-Bessel orthonormality relations, which you can only get if you have a specific instance of what f is. In the, in the next video, I will show you how to determine these coefficients in a specific example. But this is a general setup.